IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in the Carpathian Basin. I hope everybody is having a good and healthy weekend. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Raghav. Hi, Gurpreet. And hi, Fatime. Good to see many of our regular students. Hi, Shirojidin. This lesson, students, is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there. Try our premium package for general IELTS. Check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. I'm just putting up the URLs up here so you can check it out at any time. In this lesson, we are focusing on speaking part three, and I will give you a couple of tips on how to answer like a pro. So how to answer to get those high bands and really sound professional when you're giving your answers. Now, of course, one of the first and most important steps to being like a pro is doing lots and lots of practice. And I will show you where you can do that for free. So this is our academic IELTS website here. And on this website, you can join the premium package by clicking the red button, or you can try it for free by clicking the green button. And when you try it for free, once you have your My Student account, in your My Student account, there is a function called Student Partner Speaking. Uh, this is kind of like um, WhatsApp or Skype or Messenger interface. Uh, when you click on that, and this is absolutely free for you to use, so you don't have to pay a cent, except of course your internet costs. And when you click on that, it will open up this page here, and on this page you will find other students. Currently we can see that Mert, Brenda, Mohammed, and Fariz Obek are in here waiting for some other IELTS students to start a conversation with them. Uh, you can do chat, video, or audio. And of course, there are IELTS questions that you can use here as well. IELTS speaking scripts, let's click on people. And then you have lots and lots of questions there. For general IELTS students, it's the same idea, green background. You can click the premium package with the red button or try it for free with the green button and then get access uh, to that speaking. So the first tip for speaking like a pro is lots and lots of practice and we have that available for you absolutely free on our websites. So definitely practice as much as possible. Reach out to other students, say hello to them. Great, so Mohammed saying yes, I use it every day and Mohammed, you are on track to speaking like a pro because you're using it every day okay uh, Saif it's really simple to use just go to the website sign up for the premium course or the free trial course and then uh, click that student partner speaking button in your my student account and off you are to the races okay students if you have questions something's not clear uh, just send me an email adrian at aehelp.com and I will uh, help you out, okay? Surrender, thank you, that's very kind of you. Uh, students, uh, today we are again looking at speaking part three and we will practice our speaking with some questions. It's the most challenging part of the speaking interview. Now this is speaking, so make sure to speak and repeat what I say. So when you hear me say a sentence, make sure to repeat. Okay, all right. So uh, the next tip before we begin here to speaking like a pro is you have to speak fluently and with good coherence. So you have to uh, make sure that your examiner clearly understands your answers, okay? So uh, here's your first tip, okay? Uh, whenever you are answering, always think answer plus explain. Now, when you're thinking of the explain, the most important question that you should always have going on in your head when you're giving your answers is why, why? 
Uh, what's your favorite sport? My favorite sport is basketball. Why? Because it's a fast-paced game. It's a team sport. I get to hang out with my friends. Okay, so always think of the why. All right, so answer, explain, think of the why, and then give a smooth flowing example. Okay, just yesterday, I played a great game of hoops with a couple of friends, shot a few baskets. I had a lot of fun, okay? So that's how you do it. That's my first tip, and I will give you more tips as we go along on how to answer like a pro, but for right now, what I want you to focus on is giving an answer, giving an explanation, and giving a smooth example to these questions, okay? So, you finished part one in your speaking, you finished part two, and now you're on to part three. Your examiner will say, okay, that's the end of part two. Now for part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, let's talk about recycling. Okay, so uh, when you hear the word recycling, you should right away start thinking of plastic bottles, paper, recycling centers, reuse, reduce, okay, so all of those connected elements. And then the examiner will say, do you think it's mainly the role of governments or individuals to make sure that people uh, recycle, okay? So give me a nice full sentence answer for this. Of course, think about the explanation and then uh, think about an example as well. All right, uh, Kyber's quick out of the gates. Kyber says, yes, I believe that it is the responsibility of both individuals and authorities to be fully aware of recycling since it would help the natural resources that produce um, and remain. Okay, Kyber, the end of it is a little bit um, that are underground and remain and not yet finished for a clean environment. Okay, Kyber, keep it simple. Don't overthink it. Okay. Uh, Lydia says, it's principally impor important um, for society members about recycling awareness and its advantages since it conserves natural resources as well as positively protects wildlife habitats. Okay, Lydia, not bad. Careful with your grammar there. Uh, Carolina, good to see you in class. Carolina says, I concur with the idea of both governments. I concur with the idea that both governments should control the recollection and process of recycling products and people must recycle on their own as well. At home, I always separate plastic cartons and glass very nice, Carolina. I like that smooth flowing example. When your example is good, you don't need to say for example or for instance, you just say it. At home, I always separate plastics, cartons, and glass. Okay, good, Carolina. Beck John says, in my opinion, I believe that it's the government's duty to encourage people to do recycling uh, since all people obey the government who can charge those that don't recycle. Also, many schemes to recycle the trash have been implemented by governments like different containers for various types of garbage on the streets in the city. Very good. Beck John, nice to see you in class. All right, lots of great answers coming from members. I can see that, that's fantastic. Arza says, I think both sides have their own responsibilities since governments could impose some policies to indulge more involvement of their citizens into recycling activities while people could do it as a daily habit. Yeah, very good, Azra. That's what I would say. So I think it is both the responsibility of individuals as well as authorities to make sure that everyone recycles as much as possible because only through the combined effort of governments and people can humanity sustain its exponential
population growth. I make sure to follow government regulations on recycling and I take extra steps to compost my organic garbage. All right. That's my answer. So you can see that answer explanations and example. Here we go, students. Uh, repeat after me. So do you think it's mainly the role of governments or individuals to make sure people recycle? I think it is both the responsibility of individuals as well as authorities uh, to make sure that everyone recycles as much as possible because only through the combined effort of governments and people can humanity sustain its exponential population growth. I make sure to follow government regulations on recycling and I take extra steps to compo compost my organic garbage. And I hope you do too. Okay, one of the thoughts that always saddens me is when people put banana peels into plastic bags to be buried into the ground. Yikes. Okay. So uh, that is your clear band nine answer. That's answering like a pro, giving an answer, an explanation, and an example. Okay. So that's how you do it. Now, if you didn't answer the why question, then uh, you will be asked the why question. So then the examiner will say why. But if you included the why question in your answer, which you should always do, okay, so that's what I mean about thinking about that why, then uh, the examiner will go on to the next question. Here we go. What may happen in future societies if people put all their waste into the garbage and do not recycle? Okay, so let's give a nice full sentence answer for this one. One more time. What may happen in future societies if people put all their waste into the garbage and do not recycle? So here, notice that very important if conjunction creating the condition. So here you have to respect that and to answer like a pro, you have to reflect the conditional, okay? Because professional answers reflect the nature of the question. So reflecting that if. All right, Alex, Joseph says, well, I think if people quit recycling, both garbage piles and landfills will increase as a result greenhouse gases will increase subsequently fossil fuels and natural resources will diminish and then what will happen alex to the future society okay don't forget about the topic here the future society right keep that in mind alex so tie that into your answer to answer like a pro you have to really focus on the topic and the controlling ideas of the questions Okay. Carolina says, well, if people don't separate their garbage, there would be more pollution, global warming, and deforestation. More species will become extinct, like the pink dolphin in the Amazon. Mm, yes, very, very sad, Carolina. I like that smooth flowing example. And then tie that in, Carolina, so future societies will have a lower quality of life and will have more disease and less wildlife to look at, right, Carolina? So future society, future people. Okay, Vishal says, there will be an increase in the death rate of animals uh, that eat plastic, such as whales and birds, which will contribute to the uh, pollution in the environment. Vishal, use natural language. Uh, we wouldn't say uncleanliness, that's awkward. Uh, pollution is the correct word in that context. Okay. Flower Sun says, if everyone throws their trash into the garbage, the environment will seriously pollute over time. It will cause illness um, for, and difficulty for breathing for both humans and animals in future societies. Uh, very nice, Flower Sun. I gave you a little bit of correction there. Pay attention to that. Um, Ikram 
Elben Gaoui says, regardless, what we cannot predict will happen. Personally, I guess that probably it will be more global warming and more disease. Yeah, Ikram, I guess that we can't genuinely predict what will happen. What we can definitely predict that it's not going to be for the better uh, based on past experience and what's going on in the world today. So... Roshni says, well, I imagine that uh, it will lead to increased disease, um, having a devastating impact on the environment, just piling up garbage in the land, so, and um, such if the government didn't recycle trash. Okay, Roshni, careful with your grammar near the end there. Okay, all right. So uh, in this case, if recycling were to cease, garbage would pile up and further pollute the land, air, and water, leading to disease, death, and an overall lower quality of life. It is possible to see evidence of this already with the near extinction of species like panda and tiger. Let's make those plural pandas and tigers. All right. Again, you don't need the perfect answer. You just need a good answer, okay? So still continuing on with that answer, explanation, example. So here we go. What may happen in future societies if people put all their waste into the garbage and do not recycle? In this case, if recycling were to cease, garbage would pile up and further pollute the land, air, and water, leading to disease, death, and an overall lower quality of life. It is possible to see evidence of this already with the near extinction of species like pandas and tigers. All right, now notice students that I'm using the conditional here and I'm also using an unreal conditional here because I'm showing the listener, the examiner in this case, that I don't think this will happen. I don't think people will uh, be foolish enough to just suddenly stop recycling. So if recycling were to cease, that's an unreal condition, but given that condition, okay? garbage would pile up okay uh, pile up is a phrasal verb which means can anybody tell me what that phrasal verb pile up means just a little bit of vocabulary here so all phrasal verbs have an accurate single verb and knowing phrasal verbs and knowing the accurate verbs as well is uh, very, very good to enhance your vocabulary, your lexical resource, again, to speak more like a pro. Arman, very good, Arman Shah. Uh, the most accurate verb is accumulate. Yeah, accumulate. Okay, so using phrasal verbs and knowing their verb match is an excellent way to quickly enhance your lexical resource so that you can use that so-called higher level vocabulary, okay? Accumulate is the right word. Uh, cease, Sukhdeep means to stop, okay? So cease is another way to say stop. All right, nice. So again, building your vocabulary. Always build your vocabulary. When you hear a phrasal verb, think about the proper verb. When you hear the proper verb, think about the phrasal verb. Okay, build your vocabulary. All right. So let's go to the next question. Rolling along nicely, students doing a great job here today. Fantastic. Here we go. How has recycling changed the way individuals do their daily shopping? Hmm, that's kind of an interesting one. So try that one. Give me a nice full sentence with explanation for this one. Okay, so how has recycling changed the way individuals do their daily shopping? Okay. Well, 
Let's see what you have for this one. Uh, Payabasak says, recycling has changed a lot when it comes to regular shopping for individuals. Nowadays, people prefer more paper or jute bags instead of plastic bags as they are easily decomposed in soil. Okay, Paya, good. Just be careful with the way you construct the beginning of the sentence. So it's not recycling that has changed, but shopping has changed a lot uh, since recycling has become mainstream. People pay much more attention to whether or not the packaging of items that they buy is recyclable, right? So we stay away from styrofoam packaging and look more for packaging, for example, uh, with paper. Okay, so careful, Paya. It's not the recycling has changed a lot, but the shopping has changed a lot since recycling has become mainstream and people are more aware of this need. Okay, uh, Real Diamond says, in my opinion, the strategy of recycling will change. How has recycling changed the way individuals do their daily shopping? Not how has recycling changed students, but how has recycling changed the way? In this kind of a sentence structure, recycling is active and recycling is changing shopping habits. So be very careful. If you don't catch it right away, um, then you might want to say something like, uh, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Can you repeat the question? And it's absolutely okay to do this once in part three. Uh, you won't necessarily lose marks for that, okay? Especially if the question's a little bit tricky or awkwardly worded. Uh, even a native speaker might not catch this on the first round. So they might say, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Can you repeat the question? And then the examiner will say, sure. How has recycling changed the way individuals do their daily shopping, okay? All right, let's see. Shiro Jidin says, recycling has influenced the way people do their shopping uh, more than people think because in recent days, people have been trying to buy more uh, nature-friendly goods, uh, even shopping bags. Yeah, absolutely, Shiro Jidin. So one way to make sure that you're not going off topic and you're talking about the right idea is to reflect the question. And again, that's what a pro will do. They'll reflect the question. So uh, they'll say something like, recycling has greatly influenced consumers' everyday shopping habits. Customers pay more attention to bringing reusable bags to the store rather than plastic bags in the past as well. Many people have been paying careful attention to the packaging of goods, making sure that they are purchasing environmentally friendly products that they can later recycle. Okay. Um, this is the reason I avoid uh, styrofoam packaging. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so uh, repeat after me. Okay. And notice how I'm using the question to help me answer accurately. How has recycling changed the way individuals do their daily shopping? Recycling has greatly influenced consumers' everyday shopping habits. Customers pay more attention to bringing reusable bags to the store rather than plastic bags in the past. 
As well, many people have been paying careful attention to the packaging of goods, making sure that they are purchasing environmentally friendly products that they can later recycle. This is the reason I avoid styrofoam packaging. Okay, um, so notice here I'm using has influenced, present perfect, and have been paying, present perfect continuous. The question is has changed, it's present perfect. So again, I make sure to reflect that in my answer, okay? So you have to do that. Um, one, again, really good way to make sure that you're staying on topic is use the question in your answer. Paraphrase it as much as you can. So I paraphrased it here. If you can't paraphrase it, just verbatim reflect it, okay? It's still better than going off topic. If you go off topic, you lose band scores, all right? So keep that in mind, okay? All right, um, now here's a follow-up question. What else can be done in the future? So what else can be done in the future? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. What else can be done in the future? That means what else can be done in the future by customers uh, to pay more attention to recycling? Okay. All right. Let's see what you come up with for this one. Vaidehe uh, Todoria says governments should ban all plastic bags for shopping and start using paper bags. There should be different garbage containers in the public, for instance, plastic waste and recycling. Okay. Night Force says the government should consider prohibiting plastic bags as they have a major negative effect on the environment and encourage people to bring their own recyclable bags made from different materials. Good. Carolina says in the coming days, plastic can be banned globally to stop using it as a main form of packaging like nowadays. Yeah, um, I'm not sure about all of you, but uh, maybe you've noticed that plastic straws are disappearing. I know that in many countries, including Canada and Hungary, uh, plastic straws are no longer used uh, for um, restaurants and for the hospitality industry. All of the straws now are paper. It's taking me a little bit of time to get used to this as a new change um, because paper feels a little bit different. Uh, it's more abrasive, but um, all the straws in the restaurants now uh, and for a lot of other products are in the stores as well are made of paper. Is everybody else seeing that? So people in um, other parts of the world, India, um, in uh, South America, Central America, other areas in Europe, have you noticed that there's no more plastic straws? Or am I the only one that's going crazy? All right. Yeah, Kyber says, yeah, there's no plastic straws. Kuldeep says, yeah. So 2020 is an interesting year, not just for COVID, but 2020 is the year of the death of the plastic straws. So that's kind of interesting. When we get older and people ask us, hey, when did plastic straws disappear? We can say the same year COVID happened, 2020. All right, <laughs> that's kind of an interesting fact. Um, Kevin Bowie says, um, recycling aside, environmentalists and other activists can push for stringent regulations that fine not only individuals, but also firms that pollute the environment. I understand this is a tough call, but a similar legislation has been passed by the Singapore government and it's a runaway success. Very nice, Kevin. I love that real world example there as well. That makes sense, that's great. Okay, good. All right. Sandeep Kaur says, governments should focus on recycling and ban plastic objects. As a result, people will be able to reuse their old materials like furniture and so on. Yeah. Fatime says, the way of shopping has revolutionized through the years and more and more fundamental aspects can be done to in the distant future. For instance, plastic bags can be overpriced so that people will avoid using them. Very good, Fatime. Very nice. Okay, uh, here's my answer. Well, 
in addition to uh, what is being done these days, governments should encourage people to use less and not over consume. Much of today's pollution could be avoided by reducing the extreme consumeristic nature of society. People often buy goods that they don't really need and much of it just ends up in a landfill. Also, authorities and people should become more aware in the future of products that they can reuse. Okay. All right. Um, so here's my answer. Repeat after me. Uh, what else can be done in the future? Well, in addition to what is being done these days, governments should encourage people to use less and not overconsume. Much of today's pollution could be avoided by reducing the extreme consumeristic nature of society. Uh, I bet a lot of us would agree that today shopping is really getting out of hand. We're just buying, buying, buying needlessly in many cases, wasting our time, money, and polluting the earth. People often buy goods that they don't really need, and much of it just ends up in landfills. Also, authorities and people should become more aware in the future of products that they can reuse. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret. Some of you may know this, some of you may not, but... I guess that most of you are familiar with um, the three arrows of recycling. It's kind of um, a uh, universal symbol for recycling. Is everybody aware of that? Uh, these three arrows actually have uh, a meaning. It's called the three R's of recycling. And it actually means uh, recycle, reuse, reduce. Okay, so this is the message that's being sent to the world and to people to sustain the environment. This is just kind of a side note. I always like to share a little bit of what's important in the world today. Uh, now, according to experts, uh, the most important, the first, is reduce so use less use less water use less coffee cups so reducing is the best way to save the environment the second way is to reuse so if you can reuse your coffee mug and so on that's the second best for the environment and interestingly the third is recycling recycling actually uh, takes quite a bit of energy uh, to send all of our bottles and such back to the factory to break it down and then make new products. Um, so that requires quite a bit of energy and can actually create pollution as well. So the best, the number one, is reducing, just using less, uh, so not overusing. The second one is reusing, so not throwing out our uh, day-old cup. Okay, And the third one is recycling, so this is actually the order of importance. And we're paying a lot of attention to this, but there's still more that we can do with these components, okay? Now, obviously, that is different from one region of the world to another, but it is important. Again, when I'm saying all of these words and sentences, just keep repeating me. Practice your speaking, okay? All right. Thank you for letting me share that interesting point with you. So the three arrows are the three R's of recycling, recycle, reuse, reduce, it's nicely connected to this topic. If you get an IELTS speaking section that's dealing with the environment and saving the environment, 
it can definitely be helpful to remember these three R's for your answers. It will be very impressive for the examiner. They'll be like, ooh, this student not only speaks English, but they're environmentally conscious as well. All right. So if you're doing a great job, uh, the examiner will say, okay, uh, let's talk about plants and trees. So they'll kind of introduce another subtopic. Okay. All right. Yeah, great to see that so many students knew the three R's of recycling. Okay, so let's talk about plants and trees. Here we go. The first question, do you think it is important to keep plants around the house? Why or why not? Give me a nice full sentence answer. So still dealing with the environment. Obviously, part two was something about the environment. And we have lots of answers coming up. Amanjat Kaur says, well, from my point of view, in the future, there should be hard punishment for using plastic materials. Okay, that's from before. Uh, Beck John says, I do believe it's essential to grow some plants such as trees and grass near the home as they not only freshen the air, but also um, yield fruit. Okay, it's yield fruit, Beck John. Give fruit is a little bit awkward. They yield fruit or produce fruits for eating, right? Maybe you can give an example. You have a lemon tree just outside your home. It's freshly squeezed lemon in your tea. Mohammed Azat says, yes, I agree with this because I think plants around the home uh, create a good feeling and help people to breathe fresh air and relax. In addition, they provide nice decoration for the home. Uh, Mohammed, notice how I replace some of those words to make it a little bit better. Natasha Nawaz says, yes, definitely. Uh, in my perspective, keeping plants indoors is not only good for health, but it improves concentration and productivity. In addition to this, it reduces stress levels and mood swings. Okay, yeah, good, Natasha. Do you have plants around the house? Maybe throw in a nice smooth example. Pachu Yadav says, yes, it's good to keep plants around the house because they give off oxygen, um, entertain our thoughts, and decorate our homes. Very nice logic there. Good answers. Huang An Bui says, um, yes, plants can help to figure out the direction of the sun in the morning. They can help balance temperatures indoors. I've seen such a place in Japan, which blows me away by how much energy it can save. All right. And Mohammed Azad is throwing some palm trees and flower emojis at us to encourage keeping plants at home. Rajveer Singh says, of course, it's imperative to keep plants around the house that it, as it not only adds to the decor, but also freshens the air. Due to this reason, I've planted neem trees outside my house. Oh, I love neem. Rajveer, neem is, um, I use the cream for cuts and scrapes. It's an incredible uh, cream that helps uh, the body to heal. So neem is very good. Neem is used in toothpaste, in ointments. It's fantastic. You have a neem tree. I'm jealous. Okay, um, Roshan, Laura says, yes, of course, it's important to keep plants near our home or living space. From plants, we get many benefits like fruits. In addition, plants give off a lot of fresh air and consume carbon dioxide. Very good, Roshan. Nice answer. Okay. And you can actually say CO2. So CO2 is fine. We can use that vocabulary as well. Amit Chatterji says, yes, it's extremely important because there are lots of species of plants that provide oxygen. Also, greenery is very important for our eyes as plants help photosynthesis or have photosynthesis. Yeah, photosynthesis is the process of converting uh, carbon dioxide into energy, uh, Amit, um, and in the process giving off oxygen, of course. Um, you might want to explain that, Emit, if you're going to use photosynthesis and how photosynthesis benefits humans. Okay. All right. Some nice answers. So um, I definitely uh, believe 
that having plants in and around the home is a great idea, not only because they make great, uh, if you were to use that, so let's use beautiful decor, but they also freshen the air and can even yield fruit. I have an apple tree in my backyard and every year I look forward to picking these delicious red apples. All right. So there is my answer. Uh, repeat after me. Do you think it is important to keep plants around the house? Why or why not? I definitely believe that having plants in and around the home is a great idea, not only because they make beautiful decor, but they also freshen the air and can even yield fruit. I have an apple tree in my backyard, and every year I look forward to picking these delicious apples. Okay, and uh, yeah, not pants, although it's a good idea to keep pants around the house as well, um, but plants, right? I'm sure a couple of you caught that and had a little chuckle. Um, but plants and pants, yeah, keep both around the house. Pants may be even more important. Okay, uh, next question. Here we go. Uh, what can people do to reduce the amount of tree products like paper in their daily lives? Okay, um, give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. I'm glad a couple of you got a good chuckle out of that as well. Uh, so what can people do to reduce the amount of tree products like paper in their daily lives? Okay, uh, Lydia says, there are many and various ways to minimize the use of paper in everyday life such as using free online notepads and reusing notebooks until the end. Yes, Lydia, I agree. Furthermore, I donated newspapers, books, and magazines to local libraries and schools as well. Very good. Nice answer, Lydia. Yeah, going digital, right? That should pop into mind. All right. Bobo Murad Gzamdamov says, in my view, people have to plant distinctive types of trees to increase the number of paper products. Okay, uh, Boba Murad, this isn't about how to increase uh, tree products. It's how to decrease uh, the amount of tree products, right? So we're going on decrease here. Uh, for Dobbs, Nabziev, uh, nice to see that silver icon by your name. That's so cool. Uh, to minimize the amount of tree products, people should use gadgets to send emails or to keep data like me. I use only email instead of mail uh, to uh, save and send information in my laptop instead of writing it and posting. Yeah, very good for Dobbs. Careful near the end there, but otherwise that was very good. Okay. Uh, Adiana says, I think one of the best ways to reduce paper is to utilize digital resources to the fullest. Yeah, absolutely, Adiana, and give a little bit more explanation and example, right? So, uh, importantly, people can minimize paper products at home by going uh, digital as much as possible. What I mean is instead of writing down ideas on paper, writing them into a document on the computer. Or, like me, Instead of getting bills through the mail in paper form, uh, getting digital notifications 
from the utility companies. Okay, all right. So there's my answer. Uh, repeat after me. What can people do to reduce the amount of tree products like paper in their daily lives? Importantly, people can minimize paper products at home by going digital as much as possible. What I mean is instead of writing down ideas on paper, writing them into a document on the computer. Or like me, instead of getting bills through the mail in paper form, getting digital notifications from the utilities companies. Okay, also bank statements, right? Uh, students, you've done a fantastic job, and I'm going to stop there. I think uh, this week has been outstanding. I've seen a lot of fantastic answers all week long, and I'm going to be back on Wednesday with some speaking part one. Remember, to speak like a pro, you have to answer, explain, example, always thinking about that why question. Use the questions. Uh, reflect the question in your answers. Apply the grammar of the questions in your answers as well. These are the strategies and, of course, practicing every day. Uh, again, for those of you who are here at the beginning on our websites, you have access to uh, speaking practice with other IELTS students for absolutely free. So check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Join that premium course if you like it and gialtshelp.com for general outs. Thank you for joining me this week in these live classes. I hope to see you next week as well. I will be back at this exact same time on Wednesday for another four days of lessons. My name is Adrian. I'm signing out from Budapest. Much love to all of you. Bye for now.